I have a few more in the opening medley, but I'll tell you guys what I've played up to now if you're just joining us and while I get this music out because the next couple are sheet music. So I started with Sunshine in My Soul and then I went into It's Real and then I played Such Love, which if you watched last week, you remembered that Josh was trying to sing that song to me and remind me that I did know it and it just didn't come at all. So I found that in the hymnal, just like he said it would be. And so I played that one third and then Church in the Wildwood and God is so good. So now I'm going to play Nailed to the Cross and then we'll go from that into Follow Me. Good evening, officially, after that little 
break in the middle of the opening medley. I normally try to do a bunch without talking, but that I had to do some shifting around. So I'm really glad you all are joining us this evening. And I'm Natalie, and I play the piano. And my husband Josh sits behind the camera and really run, he's the brains of this operation. We met somebody at a service this week and I told them that. I said, credit where credit is due. He has a lot harder job on the Sunday night lives than I do. I get to just sit here and play beautiful music. So thank you guys for joining us. We're very excited to have you here. Okay. What did you just play? I'm I sorry. played Revive I Us Again. Did I play, did, did I play the right okay, song? That's correct, yes. Okay, that's what I had written down. No, I just forgot where we were. No, it's fine. I had a moment and thought maybe that's not I didn't what know I actually where your just list ended and my list started. So okay, okay, all right. Are you ready to? I'm ready. Jump into a exciting lot of songs. Yes. All right. The first one I know you know. The next one is in a hymnal because I saw it in there today. But okay. I don't, I don't. I might have to get the hymnal for you. Okay. All right. So let's do Unclouded Day. Okay. Yes, I do know that one. And the next one is simply why. S why? Like, uh, like mm, I don't know that okay. I know. I, it's in the Bible truth, which is over on the behind you. I'll get it for you. Okay. Yeah, I don't think I know that one. But, yeah. Okay. And on my, let's see what I have tonight, is Songs and Hymns from the Heart which is published by North Valley Publications out in California. A very, very good book. It has a lot of gospel songs in it, which I really love. It's songs that I've grown up singing but had never seen sheet music for. So I have that book if you have a page number out of there. And then I have the soul-stirring songs and hymns on my piano tonight too. So if you guys have those and you want your favorite played from it. And while he's giving me this book, I'll tell you, we thank you. Well, why? I do not know that song. This will be fun. We made several YouTube videos this week. We actually were able to get some filming done, so that was great, including the video for the sheet music for And Can It Be. So the sheet music's been on the website now for several months, the uh, advanced congregational arrangement, but we got the video done this week. So it will be coming soon to a YouTube channel near you. But okay, let's see. Why? Um, all right, we'll go for it.
What a beautiful song. Thank you for suggesting it, whoever did. Next up is Rock of Ages. Okay. And the next one is from our friend Walter, who was um, said that your granddad sang with um, Dad and Aunt Tammy tonight. Oh, and, okay. Uh, so he asked if you would play Thanks to Calvary. Thanks to Calvary. I was about to say, if it has to do with my granddad, it's probably Thanks to Calvary. <laughs> like episode 20 of these live sessions my, I, I'm not I'm drawing a blank on exactly what number but I think it's around 20 my grandparents were on a live episode with me and Papa sang that song so if you want to mm -hmm. hear all the words to it and he's a great singer so that was fun you ready for another one yes <laughs> okay I never know sometimes if, if I'm about to keep, keep talking, talking or not. <laughs> No, I'm ready for another one. Okay. The next one is He Hideth My Soul. Okay. <laughs>
Oops. I just realized I spelled hideth in old English. I'm sure everyone knew what it actually meant, though. How do you spell hideth in old English? H-I-D-E-T-H-E. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Extra E. Okay. Wow, no one even said anything. Y'all are too kind. Uh, It's a gracious group. I won't have to cross Jordan alone. Okay. Um, I'm going to grab the hymnal right here. I know which Uh, book it's in, believe it or not. Um, I know the chorus really well. I think that's actually in this book as well. Um, hold on a minute. Let me double check this because I want to play that. I don't know if it's if I've played that on the live. It's been a very long time. I won't. Okay, let me see here. That's a Redback song. Won't have to cross Jordan alone. Two fifty-seven. There it is. That will be on the next Redback set. So we filmed another Redback set too this week. So the next installment, whatever that is, uh, volume 12, volume 13, something like that. I think I played up through page 252, something like that. So this next video will have, I won't have to cross Jordan alone because it's page 257. So, all right, let's see. Pretty tune. Do you know Days of Elijah? Days of Elijah. Uh, that's a, um, it's an urban gospel song, and I, it, it, that's, who, that's where it was popularized. There are lots of choirs that have done it, so um, kind of, I kind of know it. blank on the rest of it so you heard an excerpt of Days of Elijah so that's the condensed version (laughs) I don't think I've ever played that so I was kind of hanging on for every measure, hoping the next one would come. So, and they didn't. Since Jesus came into my heart. That one I do know.
right. And then let's do Come Thou Fount. Okay. So tell us what you think. Okay. So I, I remembered this afternoon to post what we're doing this week. So if you're traveling or if we're near your area, we'd love to meet you. So tomorrow and Tuesday, we'll be at Emmanuel Baptist Church in Radford, Virginia. That is the wrong name. It's Gethsemane. Baptist Gethsemane. Church. Oh, I printed it wrong on the schedule. Okay. I'll, re so, I'll make... Funny story. Whenever the last time we were there, um, I believe the assistant pastor was joking with us that the, it was Emmanuel Baptist, and apparently that stuck in Natalie's mind. Oh, man. But it was actually Gethsemane. So Whoops. I will actually put the address up. Someone asked. There we go. So also the name is Gethsemane Baptist Church in Radford, Virginia, not Emmanuel. Okay, we'll correct I'll that correct that this, post. But. Oh, man, I'm so sorry. Okay, so Gethsemane Baptist Church in Radford, Virginia, tomorrow and Tuesday. And then Friday night, we haven't said much about this, and I've kind of it's kind of snuck up on me. We're doing another hymn sing, a family hymn sing, just open the hymnal, lots of great congregational music. Um, on Friday night this week, August 20th, at my dad's church, where my dad pastors in Hendersonville, North Carolina, Progress Baptist Church. I know I got that church name right. So that is going to be so fun. It's at 7 o'clock. So if you're anywhere in the western North Carolina area or upstate South Carolina, whatever, I, I'm not good with you. I'm not going to try to get like geographical things. But it's in Hendersonville, which is about 30 minutes south of Asheville, if you know where that is in North Carolina. So we'd love to have you come and join that. And Josh can put that address up there too, but it's 1935 North Rugby Road. And so we'd love to see you there. And that's actually where we are this week. The Saturday service that I posted we would be singing in got canceled. They had some sickness in the church. So that service is no longer. So I'll do an updated post tomorrow because I posted it three hours ago and already it's out of date. So we'll get that fixed. But I think that's all. How's the baby? The baby is doing great. She was really bouncing around tonight during church. So... And during my Sunday school class this morning. So she's been real active today. But that that's a very fun part of it, I think. So she's doing great. Growing like a weed. So. Okay. And what else do we need to talk about? I'm asking you. I'm trying to think. <laughs> All right. So, oh, I remember what I was going to say. Mike Robson is on vacation. So Yes. Just so you don't <laughs> worry. That's why he's not on here. He actually let us know uh, a week or so ago that they would be gone, I believe, this week and next week. So He's a blessing handling, like, answering questions for you guys because I don't get to see comments until after the episode. So he answers your questions and keeps you guys updated on what's new on the website and how to connect with us on YouTube and email and all those different things. So he's a great help to us. Yes, I actually saw several comments or questions 
directed to Mike tonight. So he is not on here and he is on a much deserved vacation. So yes, um, that's great. All right. Um, yes, that is why you couldn't find Emmanuel Baptist in Radford. It doesn't exist. No. It's Gethsemane. Good, good work. <laughs> I'm glad whoever, I'm glad someone asked that question though, because we might have forgot to mention it. Oh. Okay. All right. You ready to play some more? I am. All right. We're going to do two. Okay. One is at Calvary, and then Victory was one at Calvary. Oh, yeah. Those are great. <laughs>
Very nice. Thank you. I love that song. That The last verse says, Praises to him forever I'll give. He gave his life that I might live. No one so great could ever be. Praise him for life at Calvary. I just think that's a, a beautiful way of expressing thanks to the Lord for his atonement on the cross. And I'm very, very grateful for it. Okie dokie. Let's do 576 in the BTM hymnal. 576. So when he says the BTM hymnal, that's a, a new one for us. And it's Bible Truth Hymns. So a lot of times I get emails or comments after the episode saying, who's the publisher of whatever hymnal you were using, whatever that night. So Bible Truth Hymns is published by Bible Truth Music. And it's a, it's a fantastic hymnal. I've really enjoyed it. So I was thinking tonight, I thought, I don't know how many hymnals have Ron Hamilton, John R. Rice, and Bill Gaither songs all in the same hymnal. But this one does. It's a lot of variety. So I've really enjoyed learning it. Our church just switched to this hymnal of just a few weeks ago. So I'm getting to know it. What was the page number? I'm sorry. 576. Five, 576. I got to talking and completely forgot the page number. Okay. I will say, Saved, Saved in this book is written in 6-8 without all the little extra triplet notes. And I have never seen it in 6-8 in my life. It's, it's always in 12-8. So that really, that kind of threw me for a loop tonight. I played it like a 12-8 song like it is in every other hymnal. So, but in this one, they put it in 6-8. Okay, Victory Ahead. I have never seen this in my life. Um, that, okay, well, we'll see what happens. There's another request from that book. I don't have a page number, but I know it's in there. Okay. Um, the God of Abraham Prays. The so God I, of Abraham Prays. Yes. I actually looked yep, at there every it is. page 21. on that hymnal this Sagan. afternoon. So that's why I knew some of these ones that we don't know were in there. Yeah, Josh has been studying it a lot more than I have to pick congregational songs. This is in F minor. That'll be fun. I don't play very many minor hymns. Uh, yet another one I do not know, so we'll see. Um. It would help if I do them right, too. Hold on. I'm in F minor. Let me get that right.
I like it, but that was a hard one. <laughs> hmm. I'm glad I didn't choose to sing that one tonight. <laughs> I'm glad well, you didn't choose to sing it without giving me any warning so I could practice well, it ahead of time. I don't actually know it, been so <laughs> I, I did see it in there today, and I was like, huh. That would have been real special. Ooh, okay. All right, let's do All That Thrills My Soul. Actually, I'm going to switch the order here. Let's do I Need the Every Hour. Okay. That'll fall. These next two will be a bit of a change up. I'd rather be an old time Christian and Kay. bigger than any mountain. I'd rather be an old time Christian, bigger than any mountain. Sang. Our our youth choir sang bigger than any mountain tonight. That was a new one for them, so we've been working on it for a few weeks. Very fun song. I'd rather be an old time. Okay.
All right. So this is the last time that you bef- we're going to play one Kay. or two more songs. Okay. And that's all. All right. So Natalie usually wants to say something before <laughs> the end of the thing. That's why I'm like. Honestly, I think I'm a, a little bit tired. Just a little bit. Okay. So I'm, I'm feeling a little short on words. So. All right. We're going to let you do one that you have music for then. It's okay. It's 195. In the Bible Truth mm-hmm. book? Okay. And if um, number, actually do that one last and do 16 first. So 195 is going to be last, page 16? Yeah, I don't think you know 16, so okay. I was letting you do that one first. All right, this so been fun I, playing we're going to wrap this up here, and you all can go and tune in to Josh Townsend afterwards if you want to hear more piano music on, on Facebook. I saw someone on YouTube um, say they couldn't find him on YouTube, and so I think he's just live on Facebook. Yes. So that's Josh Townsend. He's a great Southern Gospel pianist. He, does, uh, he probably is a lot better at the, like, Southern Gospel fill-in type stuff. I'm a very, like church style pianist that's kind of what i enjoy but and like i've had people say like uh, how do you just do you just sight read that well like if you're playing one you don't know i my teacher did make me do a lot of sight reading so i do have mrs pegram to thank for making me be a sight reader but there's also like him playing fundamentals like what you do to the four notes that are there and how you can fill them in that even if you're like, oh, I'm not creative, I couldn't do anything like that. There are actually like patterns and principles that you apply to the four notes that are here. So if you're a if you're a note reading pianist and you're like, what are they doing with all the like? How do you fill in around it? There's there's like I guess tricks of the trade. But you know, if I do octaves in my left hand or I'm just doubling the bass note that I see, and then I'm kind of like always looking ahead to see what chord is coming to know how to change to it. So that's kind of where that comes from. It's not just like, it's not magic. It's like applying a lot of really well-founded hymn playing principles to it. So I talk about that more in my course, Foundations in Hymn Playing, which is like how to play from a hymnal and what to do with it. So that's kind of where, where that comes from. But okay, so page 16 first. Do you know 16? I do know 16. Okay. Well, you can play either one first. Yeah. Well, here I am already at 16. So, so I don't, I don't think I've ever... What's that called? Say again. Why should he love me so? Okay. It's not one that I've sung congregationally or like grown up singing, but I've seen it in a lot of hymnals, so it, it looks familiar. Uh, so we'll see. <laughs> Beautiful song. 
Love sent my Savior to die in my stead. Why should he love me so? Meekly to Calvary's cross he was led. Why should he love me so? Why should my Savior to Calvary go? Why should he love me so? It's a good, songs that end on a question sometimes make you think because when you think about it, there's really no human explanation for why God extended his love toward us, even that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's the mystery of the gospel is that undeserving sinner has the sin debt paid for by perfect spotless savior that doesn't seem right to us that you know that the righteous should die for the ungodly but yet that's what jesus did and it, his motive was love that's amazing so that that kind of seems to be a theme of several songs tonight so thank you all for requesting those and letting us all kind of just meditate on just how amazing god's love is and romans 8 said Someone messaged me this week and asked, they said they to have asked me to pray for them and said that they were doubting God's love for them and that they were just, all the different circumstances in their life were making them question if truly he did love them. And I encourage them to spend some time reading the end of Romans 8, which talks about what can separate us from the love of Christ. And then he gives all these lists of things, peril and sword and famine and all horrible things. And yet none of those things are able to separate us from the love of Christ, that it is constant and it is unchanging. It is not based on circumstances. It's based on God's character, which is unchanging. Therefore, his love doesn't change. So that's a pretty amazing. It's hard for our minds to fathom, but it's true. Just because it's hard to understand doesn't mean it's not true. I have forgotten the other page number that I'm supposed to play out of this book. Um, I think it was 176. Okay. I was headed there, but I thought that might not be it. I know it's at the bottom of the page. No, it's not 176. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't remember. It was a song I was kind of familiar with and it starts at the bottom of the page. I know that, I see it in my mind, but I can't. Mm, I don't know, I, I didn't write it down. Oops. Sorry, whoever was about to get their request played. 195. 195? That's it. The wonder of it all. There it is. Okay. Like, George Beverly thank you. Shea. Thank you all, like 40 of you that yes. got that for us. That's awesome. And also, I think everyone on here probably saw the comments, but Josh Townsend is not going live tonight. So okay. don't go try to find him. You yeah. will be unsuccessful. He's taking a break. Okay. This is wonderful. This is a fantastic song. So, What song is it? The Wonder of It All. The Wonder of It All. Okay. Yeah.
third verse before I play it because it's like exactly what I was just talking about, being amazed by God's love. And it says, there's the wonder of God's revelation, the Word who dwelt among men. Jesus Christ became flesh. John 1 talks about He was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. And He became flesh and dwelt among men. But the wonder of wonders that thrills my soul is that Jesus is coming again. Oh, the wonder of it all, just to think that God loves me. So as we close out this last song, is this the last song? Okay, I want you meditating on the unchanging nature of God's love. And whatever you're facing this week, know that we're going to pray for you, that God will encourage and strengthen your heart by resting in His goodness and knowing for sure He loves you beyond anything you could com possibly comprehend or understand. It's just amazing. So that's what I'm praying while I play this third verse. Mm -hmm.